This video is for junior high science. We're looking at the highlights from pages 246 all the way up to page um, 253. So before we get into the highlights, I just want to remind you that as of uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, you need to send me a video of you reciting the Gettysburg Address. So today, uh, you've been studying it all along. Uh, make sure that you practice saying it out loud, say it to a family member uh, or someone, and have someone help you uh, record it so that you can send it to me tomorrow. All right, let's jump into the highlights on page 246. Under post-war boom, find the bold term economy. Highlight economy or system of producing and distributing goods and highlight that it was strong. So after the war came many advances in technology, um, there was prosperity, there's what was called uh, a baby boom. The population grew from 150 million in 1950 to almost 180 million in 1960. So in 10 years, the population had grown by 30 million people. That's a pretty big jump. On page 247, highlight Dr. Jonas Salk and highlight that he developed the polio vaccine. And this was a terrible, terrible disease. Uh, it could kill people. Uh, or if people survived, it could leave them um, with paralysis problems, uh, not being able to walk, limiting their movement. Um, President uh, Franklin Roosevelt actually had an adult bout with uh, polio, and that's what left him in, um, in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. So this vaccine was a huge step in uh, protecting against that disease, and uh, it was a pretty, pretty good thing. Uh, next on page 247, highlight Jackie Robinson. Got a picture of him there. He's a pretty important guy. And he was a young man from a sharecropper's farm in Georgia. Now, if you don't know what a sharecropper is, uh, many of them were former slaves or descendants of former slaves. And they rented tiny plots of land from landowners in the South. And they eked out um, a pretty bare existence, uh, what we would call a subsistence existence. And um, they were they were usually very very poor, um, and the crops that they that they grew it usually was just barely enough uh, to leave them on the edge of survival. So he grew up very poor in very tough circumstances, but highlight that he became the first black major league baseball player. So from a tiny sharecropper farm in Georgia to making history as the first black major league baseball player. And he led the way for other black athletes to become major league sports stars. And uh, he's a ro role, uh, role model for many millions of people. Turning the page to page 248, highlight Marian Anderson. She was a very special lady. And you can see from our headline there, she is today one of the world's 10 most admired women. Highlight the underlined words, she is one of the greatest opera singers of her age. And uh, she started out singing at her church and then she, uh, her church uh, founded a trust fund to pay for her professional training. And uh, the interesting thing is that in 1939, she was recognized in Europe as one of the greatest opera singers of the age. But in the very same year, she was denied the privilege of singing in Washington, D.C.'s Constitution Hall. And that was for nothing else uh, other than the color of her skin. So since she couldn't sing there, on Easter Sunday morning, 1939, she stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial between 75 Five, uh, uh, in front of 75,000 people of all races who came to hear her voice. And she later became the first black American to become a performing member of New York City's Metropolitan Opera. So she was very, very talented. And you can probably find uh, recordings of her singing on YouTube. You can find just about everything on there. Very talented, very special lady. Let's look at another special lady. Highlight on the next column, Rosa Parks. 
and highlight that Rosa Parks was a black woman in Montgomery, Alabama, who refused to give up her bus seat to a white passenger. Now, the laws that they had in place stated that uh, black passengers had to sit in the back of the bus and they had to give up their seats to a white passenger if there were no seats left. So it was pretty, uh, pretty demeaning and uh, very, very unfair. So she refused to do this and she was arrested and it led to a boycott of the bus system. So uh, black Americans were refusing to ride the buses. Next highlight, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Highlight that he was a young black minister who helped organize uh, and skip down to uh, and then highlight a civil rights campaign. So you'll want to know that he organized the civil rights campaign. Find the bold term 1964 Civil Rights Act. Before that, highlight uh, legislation guaranteed voting, housing, and job rights for ethnic my minorities. And highlight that this legislation became known as the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So it was a landmark act that um, really allowed for privileges for the minorities in our country. So big deal and a big advancement there. Next, turn to page 250 and find the bold words, Justice Clarence Thomas. Around him, highlight that he was a U.S. Supreme Court Justice, Clarence Thomas and highlight that he realized the importance of moral character. Just like our baseball player, Jackie Robinson, Thomas was born to poor black sharecroppers in Georgia. Through hard work and God-given ability, he earned a law degree and served in several legal and government positions. And he served as the uh, first black justice on the Supreme Court. Next on page 251, Find President Eisenhower, highlight his name there, President Eisenhower. Under that, highlight his full name, Dwight David Eisenhower. On the next column, uh, find the term NATO, it's in bold and underlined. Highlight that it was the military alliance of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the NATO is its abbreviation. Underneath that, highlight NATO had begun in 1949 under the presidency of Harry Truman. And then highlight strength and success of NATO. And know that it played a major role in the eventual collapse of the Soviet governments. Turn to page 252. Under our picture there of our man on the moon, Highlight, the first American to fly in space was Alan B. Shepard Jr. in 1961. Know his name, know the date. Keep highlighting, in 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. And then highlight, in 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the surface of the moon. We've already had this in science, so that should be something easy to remember. Next, highlight John F. Kennedy. Find the bold term liberal and start highlighting at a liberal and this goes on to the next column. We're gonna highlight a whole lot here, so get ready. Highlight all of this. A liberal in modern America is a person who endeavors to break away from traditional beliefs and values. Because liberals often seek freedom from personal responsibility, they believe that it is the government's responsibility to provide for people's everyday needs. A conservative, on the other hand, wants to preserve traditional beliefs and values. Conservatives believe that the main function of government should be to protect the nation from invaders and that people should be free to handle their own everyday responsibilities. American conservatives want to preserve the nation's heritage of freedom and responsibility by upholding the constitutional's uh, Constitution's original meaning and promoting traditional values. So make sure you have that entire paragraph highlighted there. So President Kennedy was a liberal. 
Under him, welfare programs were expanded. Before this time, uh, families, churches, and private charities had taken care of the needs of others. So if churches had uh, people who lost their jobs or couldn't work, uh, maybe they were elderly, they would help to care for them through the giving of the church members. Um, families would usually live together. Uh, grandparents that needed uh, physical help who couldn't work anymore, they lived with the rest of the family. Uh, private charities would do a lot of the rest. Now, however, the government was borrowing more and more money and going to debt to take care of the people. So find the bold term New Frontier. Highlight John F. Kennedy called his welfare program the New Frontier. And sadly, part of human nature and uh, the fallen sin nature is that people really like to get something for nothing. Think of how much you like getting gifts on your birthday or on Christmas. You didn't really do anything to earn those, but you love getting them. So it's kind of the same idea of, um, of the welfare program. Not, of course, that getting birthday or Christmas presents is wrong. Getting presents is awesome. Um, but it is wrong to get something for nothing when you're getting money and food and housing and all of these government handouts for nothing and you're just being lazy. On page 253, find the bold italicized term Roe versus Wade. Highlight Roe versus Wade, 1973, legalized abortion, which is the killing of unborn babies. So with this, we were starting to really see the results of uh, moral decline, people attending church less. We're seeing the, uh, the creeping in of liberal ideas in American society. Next, highlight Bay of Pigs. And this was a huge fiasco. President uh, Kennedy had promised, um, had promised help to the people of Cuba who were fighting uh, the communists. And uh, he failed to send in the promised air cover and support. No American aid was given and uh, the invasion of the freedom fighters was brutally crushed. It was a terrible time. Next, highlight the Cuban Missile Crisis. So Cuba is only about 90 miles off the coast of Florida. So Soviet missiles there pro, uh, posed a huge threat to the United States. Right, and then the last thing to highlight is uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. He's in bold there. You'll want to know that he became president after President Kennedy was shot and killed. We'll stop there for today. We'll keep going on page 253 with President Johnson and Vietnam tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day, guys.